Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today we are going to have a lot of fun taking our 3D objects from Cinema 4D, exporting them out to a format that we can then post on Facebook and actually interact with our 3D model on a Facebook post. Have it on your phone with the gyroscope. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're even going to dabble into a little bit of body paint to be able to bake out our textures so that they can be uploaded to our Facebook post as well. So a lot of stuff in this tutorial, having a lot of fun uploading everything to Facebook. So let's check out how to do it. All right, so I'm going to be showing you two methods to be able to export out your 3D objects from Cinema 4D and getting them into posting to Facebook. And this first method is for any version of Cinema 4D below R20. And then later on in the video, I'm gonna show you, for those of you that have R20, there's a much more streamlined way to be able to get your, uh, your 3D objects exported out the correct way to be able to post onto Facebook. So first for everyone out there who has an older version of Cinema 4D, the way to get your objects outside of Cinema 4D and onto Facebook is a, uh, a multiple step process. And again, it's, it's a little bit more of a, of a thing than you'd need to do if you have R20. But let's just jump into it. The first thing you need to uh, take note of no matter what uh, version of Cinema 4D you have or whatever method it is, is watch your polygon count because uh, the file that you're gonna export out needs to be below three megabytes for it to upload to Facebook. So that means keeping your subdivision uh, renderer, uh, subdivision surfaces to a lower number. Uh, and also, you know, primitives keep the segments low. Uh, by default, this is 24, so we don't need that much. Uh, detail on those on the spheres for the little uh, poppy seed or sesame seeds there same with any disk objects or uh, primitive just lower the default segments here as I did and again keep your subdivision renderer down to like two uh, one is a little bit uh, too chunky uh, but you don't want three or four or something higher than that, okay? So keep that in mind, low polycon, uh, poly polygon count. And now to export out a file. So what we're gonna do is a process where we're gonna export out, and you can export out uh, a number of different files. You can export out an FBX. Uh, FBX I found is a much easier way to export everything out to have the materials kind of maintained. And then some people use OBJ, but I'm going to recommend that you use FBX. So just export out an FBX file. And I'm just, I already have it here. I'm just going to hit save. I'm going to replace my old one. And the only thing that's going to be important is if you have subdivision surfaces that aren't baked already, make sure you have this baked subdivision surface checked on so that'll bake everything out. And again, make sure that your subdivision surfaces are, are low subdivisions. Uh, we want to make sure the textures and materials are exported out. And we don't need to worry about animation because Facebook does not support animation, okay? So I'm just gonna hit okay and it's gonna export that out. And then we're gonna go to a website and I'm gonna have the link to this website in the description of the video here, but it's this black thread IO GLTF converter. Now this GLB file is what Facebook takes. And you can see up here, uh, if you want to upload textures and actually have them come through, you can export out an FBX with these kinds of formats of image files and have those as textures. They'll be a little bit more accurate than just, you know, the shader. But you'll see really quickly uh, if I go ahead and just upload my FBX here. So that's the FBX I just exported. I'm going to open that up and you're going to see the original. You can see that those colors that were in the color channel of my materials came through a little bit shiny. You know, we didn't have this looking that shiny in Cinema 4D. And this is going to be your result where it's a little bit darker. So what we can do now is export out this GLB. And if this is showing that it's above three megabytes, you're going to need to take away even more polygons or more detail because Facebook only supports three megabytes and below. So I'm just gonna export out this GLB, okay? And let's just go on to Facebook. And I got a post going, and there's my GLB. I'm just gonna drag and drop that into the post there. All right, so there we go. We have a very shiny burger. This is just kind of like the default uh, specularity that's on the uh, on your object. So there's a limitation there. For some reason, my eyeballs are not there, but the mouth is. So. 
while the FBX export is good as far as, you know, getting your objects out of Cinema 4D and onto Facebook, sometimes you can run into some issues like that and you might have to do some troubleshooting uh, and figure out what the heck happened to the eyeballs. So maybe I need to use spheres instead of discs. So who knows? Uh, but you can see that the colors are a little bit uh, washed out here as well. So that's a thing uh, to consider as well. I'll cover later on in the tutorial how you can kind of mitigate the color difference there. But face value, that's how you can get a, a, an object from Cinema 4D, export it out using this website to export out this GLB file format that you can then use to, ex, uh, to upload and post to Facebook. Now, for those of you who have R20, stay with me because we have a much easier way to be able to export out files with way more compatibility and post it to Facebook. All right, so first things first, you actually need to download a uh, plugin that allows you to be able to export the correct type of file format to be able to upload your 3D object and post it to Facebook. And while Cinema 4D doesn't come packaged with it, if you go to Maxon Labs, if you don't know about Maxon Labs, labs.maxon.net, there's all these kind of like cool uh, plugins that you can try out that's not officially supported and, you know, added or comes with uh, the actual, you know, ver uh, full version of Cinema 4D, but there's all these little add-ons. It's like, hey, you can test this out, stuff we're tinkering with, have fun with it. Uh, so all this kind of cool stuff here. Uh, but what we're going to be needing for the Facebook 3D object posting is this GLTF export. Okay, so just click on that. And this beautiful man right here, Basil, I hope I'm saying his name right, he's been very hard at work on this uh, GLTF format. And if you've never heard of GLTF before, uh, it's actually, it's highly used in a lot of AR, VR stuff, uh, WebGL kind of stuff. Uh, and it's also for, you know, Facebook, just for posting to Facebook. Uh, it just so happens that Facebook takes this GLB format. So, this GLTF export can export either format. Okay, so that's all you really need to know. I don't want to get too, too technical. Uh, but basically, just go ahead and download this. There's a ton of stuff that it is supporting now. It used to not be able to support any animation, uh, but just recently, uh, animation is now supported. So PLA and pose morph animation is, is, is supported and, you know, skin animations and stuff like that, which is really cool. And again, that's more for you know, AR, VR kind of applications. Uh, right now, Facebook, as of this uh, recording, Facebook does not support any animation as far as posting the 3D. You can only upload your object and post your object and then kind of rotate it around. Uh, and it's going to be a static uh, object, not going to animate. So you can go through and see all of the different types of uh, stuff that is supported. Uh, the, one of the most important things is the materials. Uh, you can use PBR materials here, so you can basically load up a layer in your reflectance, whether that's specular or uh, Beckman reflection or whatever you want to choose here. These are the items here that are boxed out here, highlighted. These are the things that are uh, supported, and it, it goes really in-depth. This, this whole write-up goes really in-depth with all that supported. The only major takeaway you need to take from this is, as of right now, the GLTF export only supports one layer in your reflectance channel. So if you have three layers of, of specular or whatever, you know, one specular, one reflection, whatever, it, it won't support all those layers. So you can only support uh, use one layer in your reflectance. So let's just go all the way down. It's going to talk about pose morph animations. Again, we're not going to deal with animations today. Uh, but right down here, you can go and download the latest version, okay? So you'll download it, unzip it, and you're going to unzip it and just put it into the plugins folder in your Cinema 4D install, okay? So if I just go ahead and navigate to uh, my applications, at least on a Mac, go to Maxon, you're going to go to Cinema 4D R20, and here's your plugins folder. Just place in that GLTF export right there in your plugins folder. Uh, another very important thing is that this uh, exporter only works with version R20 and above. Okay, so you can see that's right there, Cinema 4D R20 and above. So uh, 
sorry if you don't have R20. Uh, if you don't have it, maybe this is a good time to upgrade, especially if you want to get in, into AR, VR stuff. Like you're going to definitely, this is going to be very important so you don't have to like jump into Blender and, and all this other rigmarole kind of stuff to be able to export out this type of file. Uh, it is the future. So download that, install it, restart your... Uh, your Cinema 4D, and when you do that, you'll just go to File, Export, and you should see this GLTF file format that you can now export, which is which is perfect. So uh, right now I just have this like nicely lit donut, okay? And again, we can go into our materials here, and I'll just double click and select them all. So basically, uh, right off the bat, you can have your color channel supported, so choose whatever color you want in the color channel. And then again, the reflectance, you can add whatever layer of reflect, whatever layer of reflectance that you want, and you can use that layer and it'll show up in uh, on Facebook, okay? So the one important thing to note is usually, you know, you can control your reflection strength a few different ways. One is right here with the reflection strength, but then you can control the overall uh, layer strength using this percentage. Now, this doesn't actually work, okay? So just leave this at 100%, and if you want to pull back or, or increase your reflection strength, just control it this way, okay, with this reflection strength uh, option right here. So I'll just leave this at like 30 or something like that. And then basically, uh, I have some lights. One of the major things is that as of right now, this GLTF export does not bake your textures or bake your lighting or anything like that. So uh, it actually doesn't even matter that we have lighting or anything at all because basically what we're gonna be exporting out without baking any textures is just the reflection and color information. I'll show you what I mean. So let's just go ahead, go to File, Export, Go to GLTF, okay, and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'll just save that, and it's gonna prompt you with this GLTF export options here. And basically, I think by default, uh, all of these are checked. We're not dealing with any animation, so I think this might be checked, I just unchecked that. We're gonna want to export normals, UV coordinates, even though I don't think we really need to uh, for right now. Uh, definitely want to export the textures and we want to make sure that this is double sided as well. Sometimes you can uh, have some issues there. And I think this is by default unchecked. Uh, so you're going to want to check this because again, this GLB file is what is supported by Facebook. Otherwise, this would just uh, export out a GLTF. Okay, so make sure that uh, is checked on GLB, hit OK. And let's go ahead and let's go to Facebook now. All right, so let's go to my folder that has the GLB. And one of the great things is you can just drag and drop that GLB file into Facebook and it'll create a 3D post. Uh, one thing to note, and you can actually, whoop, there you go. You can see no, uh, no shadows, anything like that, but you can just rotate this around. And once you post this, uh, you can, you can then use your gyroscope on your iPhone or whatever phone you have and actually control the rotation, the 3D rotation that way. But voila, with very little effort, we just exported out a 3D file from Cinema 4D and now we have it inside of uh, Facebook, which is really cool. And you can you know, put a background here, whatever you wanna do, say something witty or snarky about some donut, I don't know. Uh, but what you're going to notice is that this is kind of being lit within the Facebook 3D renderer, whatever it's doing. I'm not a technical person, so I don't know exactly what's going on there. But you can see the two major things that we pulled from our Cinema 4D file that I covered that I that I covered uh, previously, which is the color and the reflectance value. Okay, so if we really want to crank up the, let me just X out of this. If we really want to crank up the reflection, we can go and just select all of our uh, materials here. And let's crank this up to say 90 and maybe bring down the roughness. So we got really super shiny. Let's go ahead, export out again. All of our settings should be all good. And let's rename this to shiny. And uh, again, make sure we're exporting as the binary GLB. Let's jump back in to the Facebooks and let's go ahead and let's get my 
folder up again and there's shiny i'll just drag and drop that into the share post and creating 3d post again do 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 and now we got a super shiny metallic uh, donut, which actually does not look all that appetizing at all, but you can see that those are the two major things you can export out of Cinema 4D very easily. The color and the reflection, uh, reflectance value and all that good stuff. All right, so here is another example of a different scene and I just kind of want to show how cool this exporter is, is, you know, I have a cloner object on my little burger guy here. I have a deformer that is deforming a little smile there. Maybe we can make him a little sad or I don't know. Let's just, let's just do that. He's, he's just, you know, he's going to get eaten. Why would you want to be happy? I don't know. Uh, so, so we have the cloner, we have push apart effectors. We have all this kind of stuff, right? So let's go ahead and let's see if this exports out. So we're going to do GLTF and let's do burger do, 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 do. and uh, again everything is the same and we'll hit OK and let's go into the Facebooks again and here I already had a burger there but let's go and drag and drop so I have my little do burger here drag and drop that in there so there we go, we got our guy in there, all of the cloners are baked, and one thing that you might not have noticed on the donut that is really pronounced on this burger character is the colors are all jacked up, they're all washed out, and this is a very important step that I kind of, by farting around with uh, Cinema 4D exporting different materials and stuff like that, I discovered the one thing you need to do to have the colors kind of at least be way closer to the original file. You can see in Cinema 4D, these are not, that's definitely not those colors. They're all washed out in Facebook. So one of the things I discovered is if you go to your project and go to your input color profile, it's set to sRGB. If you disable this, look familiar? So this just converted all of our uh, colors from sRGB to to no uh, input pro color profiles whatsoever and this looks all washed out okay so this is important when you're working with the GL uh, B at least uh, and working with Facebook disable the in co uh, input color profile and now we're just gonna have to you know redo this so we've got a burger we got the red like that's a red that was red <laughs> and it's like just looks like crap so let's get the ketchup in there let's get the cheese back in there that if cheese looks like that color that it was don't eat it uh, you might uh, not be feeling too hot and then we got the green let's pump a little bit of color back into there it's yellow just come on pump in the color so this is the input prof color profile is just like really weird uh, and then we got the buns let's grab a little bit more pump some more color into there and then we got the seed color, so something like that. So you can kind of mess around with uh, all of these colors and all that good stuff. And so this is what we have now, right? We worked all these colors back in there, got way more vibrant colors in here. And now we can export out again. And we got the GLTF. Let's do, uh, let's rename this to color. Do, 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 do. And hit OK. And that's the washed out version. Let's X out and let's grab this color one. This is without the, this is with the color input disabled. You know, it's still a little bright, but those colors way are way more close to the original colors we had in uh, Cinema 4D. So it's a little bit wonky as far as color support goes, but that's what I found is disabling that color input really uh, helps out a lot. So a few things if you want to go and learn more about like what is the limitations and what's uh, really good as far as what what Facebook GOB files support. Uh, one of the major things is you need to be under three megabytes in total. So let's go back onto our donut. If you have a very highly uh, subdivided subdivision surface like if you have this at four by four what this is gonna do I'll just export this out again and we'll just do uh, SDS and we'll hit OK what this is gonna do if I go back into my folder and let's see the file sizes here 
it's going to bake down that subdivision surface. And you can see that we have a 6.8 megabyte file now. Okay. And that's just coming from the highly subdivided geometry because again, this, uh, the GLB exporter bakes all that out. And what you're going to find is that when you try to upload this to Facebook, it's not going to work because you need to be under three megabytes in total. Okay. Uh, and then it shows you if you want to bake out textures and stuff like that, which I can get into right now. So, uh, so here's the deal. It's super, super easy to be able to export out a 3D file using this GL, uh, GLB, GLTF exporter. Again, if you're in R20 and above. And that's basically all you need to know. Uh, the only limitation is shadows, ambient occlusion, all that stuff. All of your lighting is not going to come through. Now, if you're fine with that, you don't care about that, see ya. Thanks for watching. But if you want to see me stumble my way through like body paint and uh, I can show you how to actually uh, bake out your textures and correct some UV stuff to be able to then add a little bit more shading to your uh, 3D model. So what I'm going to do, and thanks for sticking with me as I fumble through uh, body paint and all this good stuff. So what I'm going to do is just not make this such a shiny donut. So I'm just going to bring these values down. And what I'm going to do is just go and do the easy thing first, which is go to the donut. And basically all we need to do, I don't need to make this editable at all. I'm going to bake the textures in the color channel information. That's going to include all of the lighting, all of the shadows, all of the ambient occlusion. And I'm just going to bake that into a texture, save it out as like a JPEG. Okay. So what I'm going to do is with this donut, it's going to be very easy. I'm just going to go and go to bake texture under the objects menu. Okay. So bake texture. And the only thing we're going to worry ourselves about is this color channel. Okay, now if I check that on, you can see that this new little menu comes down here, which is like, all right, well, in that color channel, what information do you want to be saved? So what I'm going to do is save the illumination. I'm going to save the shadows that are going to be cast by our lights, and I'm going to save the diffusion. Okay, and why I'm saving the diffusion is because I want the ambient occlusion. Okay, so if I double click on any of my materials here, I have the diffusion channel checked on. And here I have loaded up an ambient occlusion uh, shader here, okay? So this is very important because if you want to bake out ambient occlusion, you can bake it out in the diffusion and have it just baked down into one color channel versus having the global effect, which you'll need to then render out a separate JPEG pass and then, you know, composite those together in, in a layered material. So basically what I want to do is just set this up so everything's just stored in a single color uh, texture. Okay. So what I can do now is just hit the preview button and you'll see what's going on. I can go to the tag and this is where you can, you know, save this as whatever you want. So I'll just have that be as donut. Uh, here is where we'll choose our format and Facebook says that it prefers JPEGs and this is just a good way to optimize and make your file size a little bit smaller. JPEGs are smaller. And if we go back to the Facebook uh, information here you'll see that uh, textures must be in the power of two in each dimension so one to two so 512 by 1024 and even says textures can be up to 4k I'll try to keep them under two so what we'll do is we'll just use this number right here so 512 by 1024 so let's go back into cinema 4d and let's do 512 1024 okay so that's all set up in the color profile let's go and use linear just so everything's a little bit more accurate as far as color space goes so now we can go and preview that again see the color shifted because the uh the linear color space and basically all we need to do now is just bake this okay so this is going to bake there and you'll see if you chose your folder you want to save it to there's our jpeg okay so there it is and basically what we can do now is just drag and drop this JPEG into that texture channel of our color channel. Okay. So there we go. Now, instead of using the actual color, we're using this image that's going to have all of the shading and lighting information on it. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing for our frosting. So I basically want to keep all of these same settings. So I'm just going to command click and drag to duplicate this to the frosting object here. 
And if we preview this, let's just rename this uh, frosting. So don't write over the other file. So frosting, let's go ahead and preview what that looks like. And let's do that again. For some reason it's not, it's kind of freaking out. Let's stop. Let's delete. Sometimes you need to delete. So there we go. You can see that we have this really weird, janky kind of thing going on. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what's happening there. So let's go into our body paint UV edit mode. Now hold on to your butts. We're going to go into body paint. And let me just resize this window here. There we go. And here is our UV window to our right here. All right, and what you're going to see is we have all of this jankiness here. And what's actually happening is if we went and baked out the, the uh, textures, we would have a lot of weird stuff going on. Now, why we're needing to do this for this little frosting object is because I modeled this, okay? So sometimes when you model things from scratch, UVs can overlap, they can not be laid out uh, appropriately because you know Cinema 4D just doesn't know which way they should be laid out with a new piece of you know hand modeled geometry. So the reason why we didn't need to do this with the actual torus here, the donut part, is number one, it's just a primitive, and primitives have a perfect UV layout as is by default. So that's why I could just bake that out super easily and didn't have any issues. But the frosting is a totally different story. So if I go and select the frosting in my object manager here, we need to fix all this, okay? so. I'm not a pro at body paint. You'll, you'll find that out very quickly, but I know enough to do a little bit of damage and at least hack my way through situations. So basically the, the game plan here is I'm only going to see the front bit of this frosting. So I only need to make sure that the front polygons are looking good and laid out nicely so that when we bake our textures, they look uh, correct. So what I'm going to do is we have two different modes. We have the UV edit mode and we have the just polygon mode. So I'm going to go into polygon mode and what I'm going to do is basically do a loop selection by hitting U and L and I'm going to select this uh, back polygon here. Okay, so loop selection there and you can see the polygons being selected. You can see they're all squashed and smushed. So again, this is going to cause us trouble. So what I'm going to do is select that loop and then grab this loop selection too. So I'm just gonna hold the shift key down to add to my selection. You can see there's those flat polygons there too. And those are kind of the two loop selections. And basically what I wanna do is fill in the gap and add to the selection all the polygons in between. So to do that, I'm gonna use the fill tool. So use uh, U and then F for fill selection. So F and then I'm just gonna hold the shift key down again and click and add that to my selection too. So there's all of those polygons. You can see this being represented not, not very well in this little UV edit mode here, okay? So we got those polygon selection, uh, polygon selected, sorry. And what we're gonna do now is go into projection. And here is where we have a lot of different projection modes that you would recognize from, you know, selecting a material tag and seeing all those different drop down menus that you can do. You can do box, you can do cubic, flat, da da da. And what I'm going to do is with all these polygons selected, I'm going to choose flat. Okay. And now look at that. It actually looks like we have, you know, this is a lot more accurate. Okay, so what we need to do is you can see we have all these polygons in the back here too, all those UVs. And that's the problem that we had from the get go is we had all of those UVs overlapping and to bake a, a, a texture like that, you would just cause all types of errors and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do first is with this, I'm going to go and just go to the relax UV and hit apply. And what that's going to do is there were some overlapping polygons just there that when I hit relax polygons will kind of let everything just breathe a little bit. And so now we don't have any overlapping polygons whatsoever. And what I'm going to do is I want to scale this down. So what I'm going to do is go to my UV polygon edit mode and hit the T key and just scale this down and reposition this right over here. So if I click and drag, we can move all these uh, UVs over there. And now we have all these remaining polygon or all, all these remaining UVs that we need to then fix just like we did with the front. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go to select and then just invert the selection. And we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to go to the projection, go to flat, 
and we can go to relax UV and hit apply. I don't know what all this stuff does. I just know that sometimes this works. It, re it helps uh, relax all the polygons and prevent uh, the overlap. So again, we're gonna go hit the T key, hold it down and scale this down and just move this on over. So we can scale this up just enough we don't want this to be outside of this little box here, okay? So we just want it inside and then just not overlapping any of the front uh, UVs there, okay? So with that, congratulations, you just made it through a journey into body paint with me. <laughs> so now uh, all this is set, hopefully, and now we can go back into our normal, uh, you know, standard view or wherever you use uh, to you know regularly work in Cinema 4D. And now what we can do is go back to that baked texture tag and let's bring this up. Let's delete that and let's hit preview. And now you can see we had that weird janky stuff before and now we're actually getting like, okay, I can tell what the heck that that is. Like that is a you know low res version of the shading on my on my uh, donut here, okay? All right, so now what we should be able to do is just re let's just reaffirm that we have this uh, file name uh, saved as something different and let's just bake this out again, okay? So let's do that and that's gonna do its thing. Now if we go to our, our, our folder, we have the frosting color, we have the donut color, okay? So what I'm gonna do is we already added the donut color, let's go to frosting and let's just go and drag and drop the frosting color into the texture, so now we have that there, okay? So this is gonna have all the diffusion, all the uh, all the color, all that good stuff, all the lighting, okay? And the reflection is gonna be added on top of all that. So now we can go, and with our textures baked, let's go, I'm just not gonna worry about the sprinkles or anything like that. I'm just gonna go to export, go to GLTF, and let's just name this donut uh, baked Okay, and hit okay, or hit save, and make sure the export as binary is on, and go to okay. Now let's go back to Facebook, check all of our friend requests from random people, and uh, let's just drag and drop this donut baked into the Facebook post window, and it's gonna be creating a 3D post, and there you go. Now we have the shading and lighting from are seen from our colors. Now the colors are not exact. Uh, I'm not quite sure why that is, uh, but they are pretty close. Uh, and then we can go ahead and you know add a little background here, something like that. But voila, we now have our shaded texture or shaded object from Cinema 4D. And again, you can see a little bit of some weird seam stuff. Maybe I need to select uh, a poly uh, loop selection more further in or further behind just to hide that. Um, but you can see this is looking pretty good. Again, if you really want to get into all this stuff, I recommend watching a tutorial from someone who knows what the hell they're doing in body paint and not me hacking my way through it. Um, but one thing that's very important to note is that hopefully our good friend, uh, Basil is going to be working on this GLTF exporter continually and I believe having it so it automatically bakes all of your textures is going to be a feature in the future so you won't have to go through all this rigmarole uh, outside of actually making sure that your UVs are all good so you will have to at least do that. Uh, okay so that's basically it. That's kind of cool. I can't wait to see what kind of stuff you guys are posting. If you do post stuff on the Facebooks, number one, be sure that you like my page and go ahead and go up to our, our mailing list, sign up for that. Uh, go to the community here and you can actually go and visit my iDesign group and request a di uh, an ad to that. And what I want you to do is go ahead, go to my group, join my group and post all of your 3D goodness there so I can see it. Uh, and if you're, you know, you're just on Facebook, be sure to tag me. I don't know if tagging, I guess tagging is a thing. Just tag uh, iDesign here and uh, just so I can see it. So that would be really, really cool. I just want to see what everyone's posting and all that good stuff. So have fun uh, going and uh, posting all of the cool, posting all of your fun 3D objects to Facebook, having Cinema 4D kind of invade Facebook, that should be a lot of fun.
All right, so if you have any questions about anything I covered in this tutorial, uh, except for the body paint stuff, that's literally all I know about body paint. If you have any questions about anything else, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'm really anxious to see like what kind of stuff you guys are gonna be posting. So be sure to join my Facebook group and post them on my Facebook group so I can actually see that stuff. Tag the iDesign page, the iDesign Facebook page so I can get notified as well. Uh, really excited to see all of the Cinema 4D renders or th Cinema 4D objects on Facebook. And uh, that would be really, really cool to see. So if you like this tutorial, please hit the like button. If you like what I'm doing on my channel, please subscribe, really appreciate it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.